Number two. Try number two. Hey, we'll get it right eventually. That's why this is the first show. This is the first show, and this is what it looks like. So we're going to start right off with product, because that's what we do. We get product. We're going to be talking about a lot of creator products today. So the very first thing that we're going to talk about is from M Audio, and it's called an Uber microphone. This is what I'm actually talking to you on right now. This is a great microphone because it does offer you a lot of benefits. The microphone's designed so I can either work it in one direction for me to talk to you in on, or I can have it as a cross table feature. It also has features in it that allows you to plug in your headphones and crossfade. So what we'll do is let me grab the box just to give you an idea. Cause if you're not buying it for yourself, cause of course I always like to say I'm not the big unboxing guy cause you'll get that experience when you get it home, but it is a very nice product and it's very competitive when you're looking at a lot of other products out there. There's a lot of other brands uh, that are more, let's say computer brands instead of commercial audio brands like these guys are. And they look more like for fun kind of, you know, type microphone. This gives you a much more of a commercial look to it, which is really nice. I like that. Plus you have the added benefits. With this microphone on the bottom, you can mount it onto any actual boom arm if you want. It is all steel and it does have some weight to it. So it sits well on the table, but still being able to mount it to a good solid boom arm or a mic stand if need be. And because it has three microphones on it, not just two, you're going to get a lot of added features to it. Now, some of it will look right into the back dark. Can you bring this camera up here for me? So here we are. We've got three different settings to it. So we can set this microphone up as a stereo recording. So instead of just having audio coming from one side, you can have it come in stereo left and right. You also have the ability to have it on you. The whole table can have a conversation off of it. You can set it up best for just you, or you can set it up for round table discussion, which is really, really nice. Again, you have mic gain controls, and this is all on the back side. On the bottom, we're going to find the actual, I think in this case, we're up to a uh, mini USB or micro USB connection. Included is a nice heavy duty roped cable for your USB. Plus you have your headphone on it as well. Now on the front side, you're going to have your headphone volume control. Because of course you can use this as an audio interface. Headphones right in the front underneath. And you get the ability to go from your USB so you can hear what's going on in the computer to your microphone and this little light right on top, well, that's your mute button. Again, a great microphone. Again, a great microphone to actually get started with. There, bring up the big screen. because I'm... Thanks, awesome. So what we'll do now is uh, we'll move on to our next product. All right? Next on the list is we have the Marantz Professional MPM 4000. And there we go, we're just baby steps on the actual very first live. So we have to change our featured product at the bottom, which we have figured out now. So next, of course, like I was saying, we've got the MPM 1000. So right here, right here is the MPM 1000. We'll move this mic over, but we're keeping it. MPM 4000. And what am I calling it, Dar? The 1000. The 1000. So this is the MPM 4000. My apologies to Morant. Let's bring the box over. The difference between recording videos is you can edit all that stuff out, but when you're live, it's all there for you. It's, it's the good stuff. Now, Morant, just like the M-Audio, both record at CD quality, which is very important because that's really what you're looking for when you're looking for audio quality, especially if you're gonna do live. If you're doing podcasting, if you're using it for video creations or anything at all, if you're just using it on a Zoom call, that's going to work out really well. Now, you can, of course, do much better than that. And we'll look at some of those pieces 
in a few minutes. Those are going to be some of our, our other audio mixers that we have and audio interfaces that have the ability to record at higher levels. Now, does it make a difference on a product of this size? No. And I'm going to tell you why. Normally, everything you're going to do here is going to be either running noise suppressions or you're going to run some contour, some bass and treble adjustments. You're going to do all that digitally through the actual computer. Now, if you were planning on doing a lot of layering and all these effects and adding all these extra things, then you would definitely start looking at an audio interface. But again, for live streaming, like what we're doing here, these type of microphones are going to work out really well to the point that we're actually using this microphone here because it's so easy to set up and use. Now, getting into a little bit more of the overall features, what's gonna be your major differences between microphones like this? This one, of course, as you can tell by size, a lot smaller than that actual unit, and also the way the functions and controls work. So Dart, why don't we bring up this side camera here and take a better look at it. So here we are. So now there's the Marantz. That is the M Audio. Now you can definitely see the size difference in that product. And again, we with the clips that come included in the stand, all of that, you can mount it onto any surface you want. But here we're going to have the ability to have headphone control because, of course, right on the bottom, we've got a micro USB, which is awesome because we're starting to get a lot of those kind of cables and a standard 3.5. So we've got that at the bottom and then we can use this actual headphone knob to control the audio out. Now we do have our gain control, which allows us to go from a low to high adjustment on the microphone gain. And then we have a mute button located right on top. Again, very easy, it's a condenser style microphone. So we don't have to be right on top of it. It's gonna have excellent pickup to it. And the cardio pattern is mostly towards you. So and there we go, that is the M Audio. Now remember, CD quality, and I'm gonna double check right here right now, and yes, it does. Both of these products do come with bundled software, which is always important. So you can either download Audacity like I do here. If you're using it OBS, you won't need any software at all. OBS will take care of all that for you. But if you are planning on actually using this and recording and doing all that, either you can start with any software program you have because it will work, or you can use some of the free software included with the program. Now in this case, to read it to be specific, it does come with the actual MPC Beats and it comes with the Air 20 Air plugin. So those are all add-ons for the actual unit. That is what you're gonna get with the Morant. Now we're gonna work our way up to audio interfaces and mixers and the microphones all being separate, but this is a great place to start. That is for sure. So remember when you actually get these units, this one has a built-in bass stand. This one here has this nice stand, but remember you can put it on anything you want as well. So very nice and adjustable. So if you're looking for an actual microphone to do any kind of podcasting or in any type of live feed like we're doing here or gaming, these might be the right way to go. So next on the list for us today, we've got Audio Technica. Now this is pretty impressive stuff. Now, Audio Technica, we're going to set it all up here for you. Audio Technica comes as a kit. You can buy Audio Technica, by the way. It's like one of the biggest audio companies out there when it comes to selection of product. And when it comes to grade and quality of product, absolutely, you can't go wrong. If you're not sure what brand to buy, but you want to be reasonable in the brand, if you find an Audio Technica, you can feel pretty good about it. So let's bring over the box. Now, though you can buy these parts separate, the kit is really nice. Now, this isn't your regular kit that you find online where, you know, a seller has put different pieces together and brought that to you. No, this is actually done by Audio Technica. So Audio Technica has gone ahead and put the entire package together. And what do you get? You get a lot of stuff. Let's start with the actual microphone. So we'll have Dart. Dart, you can switch over to the small camera for me, please. Thank you very much. And here we are. This is the very popular AT 2020 microphone in a USB package. And the plus portion of it is the fact that it has the full audio interface, allowing you to transition as a monitor between the headphone and the microphone. And what that means, you get this little wheel here, 
just like you do on a lot of the good microphones. So if we're playing this right into our computer, which is what we're going to do, we're going to go from what they call COM, which is an old school, real technical term for the port, the computer, we'll say, make it nice and simple, what we have going on on our computer versus live on the actual microphone right here. So you can blend that between the two. So if I'm using it, if I'm using the computer for backtracks, that sort of thing, I can have it closer to the COM. If I need to hear my voice more predominantly straight up on the microphone, I can do that here. This is also how you get rid of the delay in your actual voice. You want to be listening to yourself directly from the microphone. And if you're playing back, you want to go straight to the comm. Now, if we look at the bottom of the unit right here, we're going to see it's just a standard USB. Nothing special. You're not going to have to occupy any of your super ports or USB 3 ports. None of that has to happen. Just a standard USB cable that comes included. Now, off this side is our headphone control, because remember, you can plug your headphones directly into the unit. So right off to the side here is our 3.5, and you plug in any set of headphones that you like to use. Audio-Technica even takes the time to note that this is the back of the microphone, and of course, the branding is the front of the microphone. When you use this microphone, you talk straight into it off its side, not off the actual top. So the display stand, or the little table stand, is included in the package because that's part of everything. Let's take a look at all the other stuff that comes in this box. So remember, if you're watching this video anywhere else besides Amazon, please use the links down below to get yourself over to Amazon. That's very important because that's where you can follow us on this channel, our new Amazon Live channel, which will be on quite often, where we'll feature all different kinds of products and packages so this way you get a good idea. It's not going to be random. It is going to be selected goods to make it as interesting as possible. So for today, it's all about creators. And if you have any questions, by all means, just type them down below. Make sure you're on the Amazon tab. If you're watching us through Amazon Live, you get to actually ask any questions in the comment section. So if there's specific products that you have questions about, just write them down below. Darlene will let me know what that question is, and we'll get to it. So in this actual kit, We've got ourselves headphones, boom arm, a whole bunch of accessories, all part of the package. I'm just going to hit the mute for a second and we'll be right back. So here we are. There you go. All set, all ready. And uh, yeah, we've got some nice stuff here. Now it comes with, in the kit this is, comes with the headphones and it comes with the boom arm and all the accessories. Now it's a very nice set of headphones. You really get to enjoy it. Dart, right, swing over to the small side, we get a closer look at this. Awesome. So here we are. These are the M20X series, which is very nice. It's a great comfortable set. It's a good place to start. Everybody's going to have their own favorites when it comes to headphones, but if you get an a, sorry, if you get a pair of M20X in your kit, you're going to have them for a while. And once you decide to upgrade, you'll still have these as your backup pair, or you use them on a different computer because they actually sound really nice as a great starter set of headphones. Now the cable included is both 3.5, of course, because we're going to need that for the audio interface and you've got a quarter inch adapter included. All that's part of the package. And again, this is all Audio-Technica. Also in the kit, you're gonna get my favorite, your actual case to carry everything in, which is going to have the adapter bracket, which is gonna be your for your table arm, which is nice, it's all included there. And further down in the case, we've got ourselves 
or a USB cable. And that's not the only USB cable because when you pull the arm out, all right, you switch it back to the main on this one. There you go. So here we are. Oh. So we're going to take the box off the table now. Slide that just down below. In this magical box is the actual, again, this is a great way, of, especially if you're buying it for yourself, you get lucky and these are all the right pieces. There's great value in buying the packages always. Now, remember everything when it comes to USB connections for a microphone directly to your computer is not really that grandfatherable. And what that means is that as you grow and get bigger equipment, remember that that USB microphone is a standalone product. It's not gonna tie into everything else. So if you get a big audio interface or a big audio mixer, that USB microphone is gonna be for somebody else or for some other project. Don't think though you're not gonna use it because just like the Uber mic that I have here in front of me, even though I have all this other equipment, that's convenience, that's ease of use. I don't have to be anywhere near that or worry about making any adjustments, it just works. So here we are, this is the actual arm that comes included. Now, it's not the biggest arm you're gonna get, but it is a very nice arm. It's adjustable, carries the weight really, really well. But most importantly, what I like is even though it's a standard arm, Audio-Technica took the time to make sure that the USB cable is pre-run inside of the actual unit, which makes it very nice and easy to use. And that's what happens at both ends. So this way, I don't have to worry about it. Use the table clamp and you'll be all set. And again, this is all included. It's got two adjustments on the side, tighten it up, makes it easy to use, spring-loaded. All the stuff that makes this work is all part of the package, and it's a pretty good way to get going. So, and this is the actual package. This one here is called the Audio-Technica AT2020 USB Plus, plus because it has all the audio interface functions, including the headphones in it. PK, package, PK is the actual link. The link down below gets you right to the product. So if you're looking for an easy way to get there, that's a good way to get there. So we'll clear the table off of all this great stuff. Awesome. We'll put the Auto Technica card back here for now. And there you go. Next on the amazing list is M Audios. We're, we're moving up to audio interfaces now. Audio interfaces are one of the easiest ways to get going when it comes to doing any equipment. So we're going to bring this over here, take a close look for this. And I'm going to find myself. There we go. So an audio interface gives you the ability to one record usually four times better than just a USB microphone. That's very important. There's very few USB microphones that are going to do better than CD quality. This is going to be one of them. When you switch to an audio interface, you're at 192. That's going to be four times the quality. Now this is labeled as a six. Now, the important part here is that when you get to the M Audio 192.6 is that both your main line inputs, which go from the bottom all the way to the top, on the back side you're going to see that you have two lines that will be either for microphone or line inputs, which is very important, especially the fact that they're both able to handle mics. So when we record these audio, there'll be single tracks on our system. And if we have two mics, no problem. If we have any type of effects, pedal box, anything that we want, keyboards, anything that has any MIDI in and out options to it, you can plug and link that all into here. And by using the USB-C cable that comes included, which by the way, you get both USB-C to USB-C, and you're also going to get USB-C to USB-3. So it'll work on a Mac or a PC in that way and you don't have to buy a special cable for either one. Both of them are included in the package. Now, for overall options, on the back side, you're gonna have your main outputs, which are gonna be how you're gonna connect your monitors through the quarter inch. Now, this is balanced or unbalanced connection, so regardless of the type of equipment or speakers you have, you'll be able to take advantage of this. Now, when we spin the unit right around and take a close look at the front side, just below everything, we're going to see that we have two high Z inputs for our guitars. Again, we can either use them for mics, line inputs, which is any type of, you know, keyboards, any electric drums that can all plug into here. Down here, we can plug in our guitars, 
via high z so we don't need to use a di box or any special connection now it also has incorporated phantom power so if you're using any condenser microphones or any type of other microphones that have built-in preamps which is starting to become popular they'll call for phantom power and there's your phantom power switch right there in the front you also get a headphone jack in the front and you're also going to get Sorry, you're going to get your headphone jack in the front and what we already talked about, which are your main outputs for your monitors in the back. Now that brings us all down to the dials on the unit. There are five dials on the unit and the main big one right here, that is going to be for our main audio drive right here. This is going to be our main output. And that, once you set the system up, people always ask, well, why don't they make the actual mic line and put the knobs larger? And it's because once you actually set this, to where it's appropriate for you on your equipment, you're not going to revisit this. You're going to go away, you're going to come back to it, and it's just going to be right where you left it. The volume that you are going to change on a regular basis are going to be your actual monitors on your desk. And that's what this dial right here is going to do for you. Nice and easy, turn it up and down as you wish. Now peel off all the plastic off of it, and it, you know, because they take a lot of time and effort to make sure that everything is protected, so when you get it, it looks really, really nice. Now over here, we're gonna have two more dials to it. And here it's labeled as USB direct. So from this point, USB meaning whatever the computer is playing for us, and we've chosen the actual air as the actual playback device, we're gonna be able to go from USB to direct. And direct is whatever we physically plugged into here and anything in between. When you're on direct, you're not gonna have any delay. When you're on USB, you'll have whatever delay is kind of built in or into your software or into your computer, depending on how fast it can process all the information. These units can process the information so quickly, but we do find ourselves with limitations once it leaves the actual audio interface. And the last dial is the headphone control. So if you do plug your headphones in here, you'll have separate control right there for that particular unit right on its own. So there we go. Now, again, software that's bundled with M-Audio is pretty extensive. We're going to grab the box so we don't miss anything. There we go. Let's reset this a little bit. So look at it. There we go. So this is the box that you get with it, and it's a very pretty box. So, again, if you're buying it as a gift for somebody or you just like unboxing things, this is really nicely done. Uh, as for software goes, that's a very impressive list, by the way. We're going to go through a, high, a couple of highlights here. Uh, first of all, the main software program. Now, remember, I say this, and you can use any software you have. So no worries there. Pro Tools first M-Audio edition. So they'll have a proprietary package, which is very nice and good to use. That's included. Then you get some of the highlighted stuff that's really, you know, M-Audio. You've got the 11 Lite. You've got the Touch Loops. You've got vacuums, a whole bunch of plugins, and the plugins go on and on and on. Uh, it's really important to note that once you have an audio interface, there's no limitations when it comes to plugins. So if you want to have any foot pedal for your guitar, you can do it through a plugin. If you want to have your drum set sound like somebody else's drum set, you can do that through a plugin. If you want your voice to sound like any other effects that you hear on the radio or in your actual Spotify, you can do that through a plugin. Very impressive. That's what audio interfaces give you. And again, recording quality on this guy, four times greater than your average USB microphone. So. And we're doing quite well here today. I didn't even bring a clock with me. Say a thank you to Rich. Rich started following us. Rich. Rich started following us, so well, I want to say thank you, Rich, for following us. I appreciate it. I'm not going to hit on the table again like that. I noticed that that is one of those things. But thank you, Rich, very much for following us. I appreciate that. So, Rich, if you have a question, you're welcome to ask. That's what it's there for. And where are we here? We're at the bottle of water point here. All right. So where are we now? We're up to the 2040. 2040 from Audio Technica. It's a good thing I have Darlene here to help me out with these things because these are very important things. Now, I have this already pre-set up on an arm. I've used this many times. I actually like using this when I'm using the mixers. If you watch some of my other videos, you'll notice this microphone quite often. What's going on with this microphone is it's actually, and it's a hyper something. I gotta read this because I always get this wrong. So, hypercardioid 
dynamic microphone. See, I got it just before I got the box. Hypercardioid dynamic microphone. What does that mean? Is that they actually, and you see this in a lot of brands. Usually they're much, much bigger, robust microphones. But what's going on is the actual capsule of the microphone is recessed inside the actual chamber of the microphone. So I don't know if we can, we can probably loosen this and get this into a better shot for the camera this way and have a good look at that. Hopefully that helps you out there. Okay, so this is the microphone. Normally we see microphones like this. They're condenser microphones and we talk off to the side, kind of like the AT2020 that we had before. So these two microphones look very similar. Where the AT2020, you talk in off the side, it's a condenser microphone. This one is a dynamic microphone, so your energy, but you can throw a lot more gain into this microphone. It is more protected from outside noise. And the most important part, because it's dynamic, it's not gonna catch that big noise far away that you hear on your condenser microphones all the time in the background. If you're in a noisy environment, these guys can be problematic. You could be doing a lot of noise suppression after the fact. With a microphone like this, which is what you see a lot of people talking on, the Audio Technica, most people miss the fact that this particular, the AT2040, is a hypercardioid. So it's very, very good at not picking up that background noise, but picking you up really well. So as long as you have a mixer that's got good gain on it, or an audio interface that has good gain on it, and good gain is 50 or better on the dB level. So I like ones that have 60, which we're seeing a lot more of those out there. So if you have this microphone and you have an audio interface that can at least get you up to plus 50 dB, you're going to do really well. Now, again, you talk directly into it. So if I was setting this up for me, it would just have to be off to the side like that. No problem. It just works. It doesn't have to be right on top of you. You can freely speak into it and it can be like 12 inches away. And again, it won't pick up all that background noise. It gives you a good natural sound right off the front of it. So I really like that. And... We took some time to find this one because I did know they made one. They make a couple of different models, but the actual price point on this and what are they pricing this at right now? This is $99 for an actual hyperdynamic, hypercardioid dynamic microphone. Try and find another big brand that has this type of microphone for this kind of price. That is, that's why we got it. I really, really like that. And again, I'm not a super fan of saying, oh, I take this brand over that brand. But Audio Technica, right here, pretty good home run with this product here. So if you're looking for a nice professional microphone and you don't want to spend, you know, you don't want to spend $400 plus and you don't want to have to necessarily go out and buy yourself, a, it's called either the Dynamite or the Cloud Lifter, which is another $200. This would be a really good way to go for that. So if you want to have a nice professional sound, or if you need to mic something and you can't put it right on top of it, this is a good way to go. Now, of course it does for, for vocals and it does for instruments as well. I mean, if you were to set this in front of acoustic guitar, it'd be very easy to set up that acoustic guitar with a microphone like this. If you are gonna talk close to it, get yourself a sponge cover or a pop filter in front of it because the microphone is so good that if you're too close, you can get that popping reaction. So a pop filter or a sponge cover on top of it, that would be a good idea. But that's the audio technique. That's the AT2040. Again, 100 bucks, pretty impressive, which is why I have it here on my table. Not to say that I'm frugal, but I'm frugal. So I like quality, reliability, and I certainly do look at the price. So here we are. Where are we up to now? We're moving along. We've got something. We've got the M50. Headphones. We've got another audio technique product. Now, The M50. Now, I was, I'm still a big fan of the M40. Now, Audio Technica, by the way, makes a huge selection of headphones. Very important to note about when you're talking about headphones, there's two, two sides of the line. You're either producing stuff, so you're looking for headphones for production, so that means everything we were talking about today. So that's everything from creation, creators, music, artists, anything that you're recording and you want to capture and hear, that sound you want to get that accurate reproduction because at the end of the day you can't control what somebody's going to listen to your 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 work on so if you're a singer or, or a songwriter or anybody or if you're a creator like making video content or doing a podcast you know some people listen to it on a phone some people listen to it on a computer so you can't you, you have no control over that 
but the quality of the actual audio work that you're going to do, that is completely in your hands. And that's the difference between buying a product like an M Audio, sorry, a product like the Acoustic, <laughs> we'll get it right, a product like Audio Technica. It only took me three shots to get that out there. So you get yourself, there's lots of brands that are commercial brings, okay? So we're talking about the Audio Technica, which I've only been dealing with for what, three years now? <laughs> so, but there's other brands out there, but they're, you're looking for the professionals. So you can get into the Shure brands, you can get into the Sony brands, Audio Technicas, of course. There's a few more, but you're looking for monitor style headphones versus, you know, this is going to make my, my, my iPhone or my Samsung sound better. And that's, that's the difference. So when you look at, you know, Beats and stuff like that, those are great headphones if you're just looking to play music back. If you've got your Spotify list and you're listening to Amazon Music, that sort of thing, those type of headphones give you the ability to take the song, the content as is, and they try and tweak it and make it a little better. It's amazing how they do all of that inside the headphones. But in this case, this is trying to take what you've just created and play it back exactly the same. So if you've added bass into your mix, you're going to hear the bass play back through these headphones. If you've sharpened up the highs, if you've punched up the mids, if you've added a little compression, you've done any of that kind of work, you're going to hear that play through here. Now, the big question is why spend a little bit more for the M50X versus some of the other models like the M30X, which I've reviewed, or the M40X, which I've also reviewed. The driver size package I think it's exactly the same as the M40, but when I've listened to these guys, you can distinctly tell that the quality of the driver and displacement of sound is much richer. You feel the bass much closer to having a speaker with a subwoofer in the room. You get a much better response at that lower end frequencies without altering, because usually headphones that do well on the bottom don't do well in the highs. The mids tend to come out pretty good, but usually if, if a headphone is geared for a higher, higher tone, it tends to lack on the bottom. This one, I don't know how. It's all engineering. It's a lot of science, and they really pull it off. So when you look at the actual M50X versus some of the other models, and again, Audio Technica, for some particular reason, in the price point, seem to do a little bit better. Um, there are other models from other companies, and I'm going to say comparables to these guys is going to be what anything you see in the Shore brands. And there's probably others that I'm missing them right now. But if you're looking in that category, the Sennheisers, the Shores, the Audio Technicas, uh, AKGs, I think dollar for dollar right now, the actual M50 in this price point is probably going to give you the best sound. Now, of course, they do everything with their headphones. They're fully flexible. I mean, this is like the amount of flexing. This can be annoying, by the way, if you just pick them up and they've completely gone into mayhem and chaos with the headphones. But this allows you to easily place them on your head. You can have them off one side. You can easily adjust them. Now, again, the more you use them, the better they work. So this way you can have it off one ear and have a comfortable fit. You can hold them off to the sides. You can do pretty much anything you want with these headphones. And you're not going to break them because you've got a steel insert band, all reinforced. They just kind of work out really well. And they didn't skimp on them. So they, you feel it. You feel the quality. Also very important is what comes included. You get a 3 meter. 8, 10 feet? Something like that. About 10 feet. You get a straight cable, which is very thick. Nice quality. Removable, by the way, which is very important. Uh, and you're going to get a coil cable. So if this is not working out for you, because you think, okay, I don't want all this straight cable all the way across my setup. I like a straight cable. If you're just in a tighter space, you can get, it's in package, comes with it, is actually the same length, the three meter coiled cable. So you're gonna get this included in the package. All part of what you're gonna get with it. That's very nice, it's all in there, ready to go. And you also, I'm just trying to get this right. They show three cables. Maybe there's a third one in the box. I thought it was always two, but the box talks about a third cable. So let's pull this open and see what's actually in the box. Now there is a very nice pouch with it. So besides getting everything you see here, you get that lovely, oh, there is a third cable. You get that lovely pouch 
with embossed Audio Technica's name right on it. So it works out really well. Oh, here we go. All right. So Dart, I'm going to have you come up onto this side here if you can. I want to show this one up close. Okay. So this is the third cable. This is why I didn't take it out. This, this cable here is in the box. It's a shorter cable. I think it's about one meter long. It's, uh, it's your standard connection right into the headphones, which is very nice because you can buy replacements very easily. But this is the 3.5 end. Now, normally when you buy studio monitors, you'll have a good studio monitor will have a screw on quarter inch adapter. So you can take that off, take the screw in quarter inch adapter off. That's great. I like that. That's really important. It stays on when you want it on. And when you want it off, you just unscrew it and it comes off. But here, this is the problem. If you plan on using this on your actual iPhone or any adapter that has a 3.5 connection, though it will work, this one will actually go right through my phone case. I don't have to take my phone case off because it is very, very small. It's a very small jacket. It's so small, they actually put a little drop in recess just to make sure it's going to clear everything instead of having the big threads and the big, well, what are we going to call that? A gripper? The, the part of the actual adapter that allows you to grab onto it. Uh, always, by the way, pull it out. Don't pull on the cables. That's not a good thing. That's how these things end up broken. But look at that. That is so small. And that's amazing. So that's your third cable included. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I get amazed over little things and the fact that a company takes the time to put that in there. They didn't have to. People would still buy their headphones even with that not in the box. But there it is. That's included. That's great. So there we go. That's the ATH M50X. ATH M50X from Audio Technica. Again, Right now, it's my kind of favorite headphones to use all the time. So much so that, again, if you watch my reviews, this headphone is usually sitting right here. That's where it lives, and it's plugged into the mixer of the day. So we'll put this down here for now. And next on our list is going to be some monitors. We are up to the M-Audios. Now, this is great. Great little setup. This came from here, I think. Okay, so monitors. I like monitors. I like monitors that sound really good. I like monitors for a reasonable price because you can spend an awful lot on monitors. And if you're looking for a good set of monitors, this is a great place to start. Now, we want to do so much with our monitors today. We don't just want monitors because we're making music or we're a creator or doing anything like that. We want monitors because we want to listen to music. When I'm not actually creating something or when I'm editing videos, a lot of times I'll be listening to music in the background. That's what these speakers can do. So besides being great at playing back the final product and letting other people hear and critique my work, what I've done, this also allows me to be entertained. So I can use these when I'm gaming. I can use these when I'm playing music back. I can use these when I'm just streaming TV on the actual computer. That's what you can do with these. Now these specifically, it's the price point because they didn't skimp on the quality of sound. They just got smart about how to power the second speaker. And they're not shy. I mean, it's very important. There's two ways you can do this. You can go out and spend money twice. You can go out and spend money twice and have both of your speakers amplified. And there's nothing wrong with that, but you're gonna pay for that you're going to pay for the benefit of not having this little cable. Doesn't mean you still don't have a cable. It just means you get to say, both my speakers have amp plates in it. You'll also get to say, both my speakers have power supplies in it and preamps and all those other things that cost money. I don't need to have two of everything. I need a big enough power supply to run two speakers, big enough amplifier to run in stereo for two speakers. And I need a good quality preamp that runs in two channels. If I do all of that, it's only going to cost me a little bit more to add that all on to the back of one speaker. That's how you save money. The second speaker requires none of that. None of that's needed. All right there. I then just use the cable that's included and plug that into the back where it says speaker out passive and into the back of this unit. 
Now, they could have gone with push-down terminals like Mackie did, and some companies use you know this, which is a standard mono. It's an actual speaker wire. People are worried about the size. The run is not very long. The bigger the run and the more power you have to run through it, the thicker the wire has to get. But proportionally for the amount of wattage that we're pumping through these guys, which is loud, but technically speaking, not a lot. It runs through these wires, no modifications required. This is perfect. Now, these are two-way speakers. So when we turn back around here, we're going to do that. We're going to get to see a couple of the big advantages. Now, again, you're getting great value off of these guys. So we've got a driver that's much stiffer than most, let's say, cardboard drivers, and it's not as loose as a polypropylene driver. Uh, this one is a Kevlar, Kevlar driver. I think that's that Kevlar. You gotta grab the box and remember the word. I think it's, I think it's Kevlar. Not Kevlar. Oh, it's the other one. It's the other product. And it's here somewhere. No, it's Kevlar. All right, so it's Kevlar. Ah, I was thinking carbon fibers, Kevlar. So it is Kevlar, not carbon fiber. That would be very expensive. Now, what that means is it's, you get this press actual surface that is very solid and reproduces sound really well. Now, you can get polypropylene, which is fine for drivers this size, but it's nice that you get that little extra. Now, it also, as per manufacturer, measures out to four and a half inches. I'll put a little gray area stamp on that because it's I can't find the measurement that brings that up to alliance. Either other companies that are four are bigger and they're smaller, but these are definitely four and a half inch by overall outside measurement. Now, outside of that, the sound reproduction, this is very important. A lot of people are concerned at the price point, what's the hiss sound like? Because some speakers have more hiss in the background than others. And once you tune into that, so you've plugged it in, you've turned it on, maybe you've used Bluetooth, maybe you haven't, and you start turning up the volume, and then all of a sudden nothing's playing and you tune into a hissy sound. You're thinking, oh my gosh, it's gonna drive me nuts. I'm gonna hear that hiss all the time. Well, compared to other models, I'm gonna say this is like a quarter of the amount. All speakers have a tiny hiss to a degree, but this one has a very subtle, you'd have to put your head right up to it to one, know that it's this and not something else causing that of hiss, it is that low. It'll be very hard for you if you're actually four feet away from each speaker to even know that it's there. That's also very important. Something else to note, and it has to do with Bluetooth. When you pair off to a set of speakers that have Bluetooth, in a quiet environment, you'll notice that if you're not actually playing music through that Bluetooth, you get this little pinging, hissy sound that comes in and goes out, comes in and goes out. And that's the actual Bluetooth cycling to make sure there's nothing going on there. It's kind of like pinging and trying to lock in. So I recommend you either don't use the Bluetooth or have it engaged one or the other, and this way you're not gonna have that background noise bothering you. The Bluetooth will engage and then automatically disengage, and this model here puts a reset button right in the back, and you don't have to be worried about it, even though the button is in the back to make the Bluetooth work. If you put your hand over the back top of it, you'll find that button right there on, the, on top of the speaker, and that's to activate the Bluetooth. We don't want it on all the time, we don't because you'll actually know that it's back there making a little bit of noise because it's not paired off to anything. If you're not using it, let it be. It'll time out, it'll be off, you'll be fine. Now for some of the other connections on the back, we're gonna bring this up over to the other camera, side camera here. We'll move this out of the way. Look at that. We're getting better at this at every shot. Here we go. We've got some really neat features. So right again, there's our Bluetooth right at the top. Then we're gonna have our RCA connections, which are red and white or left and right. And then we have our quarter inch. Now the wording is a little spread out, a little different. I did check it out and test it. Uh, they do write unbalanced on top, which for sure RCAs are always unbalanced, but then they put balance down here where it says quarter inch. But at the same time, you can use unbalanced cables and balanced cables, your choice. Just make sure you use two of the same. So you can use cables that appear to look like a mono which is basically a tip and sleeve, or you can use tip ring and sleeve, TRS. T yeah, so that'll be your balance connection. And that'll go right there. Now, for added benefit, now, if we're using this as studio, studio speakers in the actual room, you're gonna be looking at your highs and lows, your bass and treble controls, as something to adjust depending on the room environment. So if you have um, a very hard surface room, 
where you don't have any soft furniture in there, you're going to probably want to add a little base to it and bring down the highs a little bit. But if you have a room that's, you know, got sofas in it and carpets and stuff like that, you may want to adjust the highs. And what you're trying to do is balance off the sound coming out of the speaker to match the actual dynamics of the room. That's pretty much what it's all about. And the best part is, is regardless what side you'd like to put the speaker on, you can then make it either the left or right. So you're not restricted to, well, this is the left speaker, so it has to go on the left side because if you don't want the volume control to be on your right side, well, you just flick the switch to right, and now this can be your right speaker instead of your left. Now again, there's one plug right here, and that's the passive output for the second speaker. And then, of course, the AC power supply and all of that's built right inside, so the AC power cord is included and in right there. Ported in exactly the same place on both speakers, so making sure that the reproduction of sound is as close as the same for both. Also, it's a particle board assembly with this very nice veneer covering the whole surface when you get to the front of the speaker. Very, very nice. It's all, it's got this nice one solid plastic mold case across the whole thing. There is no separate cover for it, but it's all there. This way you get to really look at your driver and see it work really nice. Now the tweeter is special because it does control the actual sound coming off it. The dispersion of this tweeter is really nice. It's built to match an actual desk surface. So when you're seated at your desk, you wanna make sure your head is kind of in the middle. So you may have to put these on stands and bring them up a bit, but this will give you proper dispersion across that space to the point that they actually in the manual tell you not to lay the speakers down sideways, not recommended because it won't disperse sound properly in the room. And there you go. I like the fact it's got a nice click, the solid where everything is smooth when it comes to the plastic finish. It's got this volume knob that's got a subtle texture to it, like that velvety rubber feel to it. And then off to the opposite side, here's our aux. So if we decide we want to plug something into the front, it'll override whatever's going on in the back just by plugging in there. I don't have to go to the back of the speaker. And we also get our headphone jack right here as well, which again will override, turn the actual speakers off and let you run it straight here allowing you to have the built-in pre sorry the built-in amplifier also power your headphones all very nicely done and again that's m audio these are their new bx4 and bx4 bt this particular model is the model with bluetooth on it uh, but they're exactly the same outside of that one little button on the back so right now again one of my favorites when it comes to models they come in different sizes but this is probably the most popular you're gonna get bigger speakers because you want them further away from you. So if you're putting them on your desk and your desk is roughly six feet wide, these are probably gonna be one of the nicer models to get. You could get the smaller ones, but then you tend to have them closer. If you've got at least two or three monitors on your desk and you wanna have these, these are gonna be far enough apart that these will feel really good. So there we go, speaker monitors. And we are gonna go to a mixer right now. These came right off of here. There we go. Ooh, I hit that. So for our mixer of the day, one, we've, we've got two of them from the same company because these are really nice and people ask a lot of questions about these. We're going to drop that on the side here. This gives us a better view. What? There we go. We'll push this back a bit. I think I just hit the camera, so I am going to take a second just to readjust this because I did hit this. Yeah, okay. All right, so here we go. I'm sorry, Dart, I still feel like I'm a little crooked there. Okay, so here we are. This is the Pro FX 6 V3. Now, the V3 is very important because for many, many years they've had the V2, and the V2 has been very, very popular for them, and they've decided to basically give us some upgrades. Now, the biggest thing is, They've taken a lot of leaps over everybody, including themselves, when it comes to what they've put into a mixer. They have basically built an audio interface inside this mixer at audio interface standard qualities that we're looking at today. So we're talking about 192 kilohertz, 24 bits in this actual mixer. So when you look at this price, think about it as basically saying, I'm buying myself a six channel, sorry, my apologies, I'm buying myself a two by four audio interface. So that's an audio interface that has the ability to send two independent channels out and bring back four channels. Now, why would you want an audio interface or a mixture to have four audio channels coming back from the computer? Well, I'm glad you asked. 
This is very important. I can have right here, there's a button. Where is it on this particular unit? There it is, right here. It is called the input USB 1 and 2. They label it as 1 and 2 because you've got USB 1 and 2 and you also have USB 3 and 4. Now, with the 1 and 2, this is not going to interfere with what's going on outside of me using it as either backtrack or if I'm doing a live show online and I want to be able to listen into, let's say, callers or people who are also online. So that's going to be a very big benefit. So again, this allows me to play backtracks without interfering with the output going back to the actual computer. But let's say I want to play a backtrack and lay down a new track on top of that. That's very important. and That's a very good thing you'd want to do. Well, you don't have to reconfigure your setup. All you need to do is choose for your playback instead of channel one and two, you can choose channel three and four. And that becomes this particular line set up right here, which is going to occupy channel five and six on the mixing board. There's a little button right here. that says three and four, and you're now playing through here. Now, remember, depending on your computer, you may have to not just change it in the software you're using because for my sake, I use Audacity. I do have to change it on that little icon at the bottom right hand of the computer where it says, uh, uh, you know, speaker control for channel three and four. I'd have to switch three and four to one and two there as well. But usually I'm doing that as a pre-setup because I'm either going to want to run my audio through the mixer or I'm going to want to just listen into my audio through the actual blend option. And it's really important. It is a blend option because you can go just a little bit on the backtrack or you can go a lot on the backtrack and a little bit on the microphone or mixer side of things. I really like that. And the meters line up really well with the software. So we do have zero right in the middle, even though we have again, three more green lights on top because a lot of software, they have headroom to take in the actual audio. So if you're pumping it a little bit above, you're okay. There is over the limit right at the top and that's gonna be somewhere around plus 16 dB for you to hit that over the limit mark. That's pretty loud. So let's go to the front camera here and we'll talk a little bit about Mackie overall when it comes to the Pro FX3. Now the Pro FX3 comes in many different sizes. We've got the six here right now. We're gonna show the advantages of having the 10 in a moment. Now with this one here, you can plug in your microphones, two of them, two dedicated mic line inputs, and those can be used for high Z as well. I gotta make sure I make proper reference to it. That's right, high Z and low cutoff. All of that in this mixer here. There's even a button located on channel one and two, so I can create two separate channels. Just press that channel. Channel one becomes the left, channel two becomes the right. Gives you two stereo track channels right there. Now, channel three and four are dedicated as left and right. So three is left, four is right. And you also have the added ability, if you only plug into the top channel, that that'll come through both channels automatically. That's a very nice setup. Now you do have some small EQ adjustments, which are always nice. You've got your bass and treble, your high and low. They do have all that built in right onto the actual unit. Now outside of that, there's no sliders on this. This is meant to be small, portable, and compact. But on top of all the other features, they do give you both XLR and quarter inch as outputs on the unit. And they give you phantom power as well. Now, to be better at it, they've included phantom as a switch option. So if you need to run any kind of condensers, or microphones that have phantom power as a requirement for their preamps, that's very important. But that's the Mackie. It does come with a lot of software. Comes with a Mackie version of Pro Tools first. It's a bundled software starter package for them. Plus they give you some other software with it as well. But again, if you're looking for a mixer and a high quality audio interface all in one, this is not a bad way to go. Remember it's two channels going to the uh, actual computer and four channels coming back, and the ability to use it for mics, lines, high Z's, whatever you want. That is the Mackie Pro FX 6 V3. And by the way, for background noise and all of that, I haven't had any problems. And for gain, that's the, that's the big one here, because of course these things I don't memorize. The gain for the mic is up to 60 UDB. So that's 60 dB above. Very nice. So if you're looking for running any type of, remember that microphone we were talking about before, the actual Audio Technica AT2040, and I said you need a lot of power to make this sound good and you wanna make sure you give yourself that extra 10 dB headroom, this mixer will run a microphone like that without buying any additional required hardware. And there we go. 
the 6 V3 from Mackie. What do we have next on the shopping list? I remember this is all trending for the actual, we're talking creator stuff here today. And our next piece is gonna be another set of speakers. Now, we did talk about M-Audio, and of course, it's like Coke and Pepsi. You don't talk about M-Audio without talking about Mackie. Now, I am going to take a second, and uh, Dar, can you, um, can you go back? Actually, maybe I can do that. I just want to see here. Yeah, I'm just going to, so $129. Oh, that's only for the B, so yeah, that's comparable because you know what? So on the board, we, we showed the actual M audio because it's a choice on the actual product page for Bluetooth or not Bluetooth. So if you were to get the M audio BX4, which is their 4.5 inch version, it's $129. These are $20 more, $20 more for the Mackies. Now, this is where the difference comes. If I'm buying speakers for gaming purposes, I would buy these ones. If that was the only reason, if I'm buying it for playing music and gaming, I'd probably get into the Max. If I want overall, if I want to have better sound quality, better overall performance, I would actually save the $20 and get the M audios. But there's still a lot of people who have really big brand preferences and I can't see why you wouldn't. Reliability and dependability, Mackie's always done really, really well. People feel comfortable about buying it. If you look at the previous versions, yes, for the very tiny percent of people, 1%, weren't happy with the amount of hiss in it. The majority of people who got the product were really happy with the overall bass performance and sound performance. And I have to agree with a lot of people where they say, I might not use this necessarily to measure the audio quality of my recordings, but I do really enjoy the way it plays back. So the quality of audio is very nice. The the sound, the smoothness that comes out of this box is very nice. Uh, the drawbacks though, to all of that, is they do have a little bit more of a hiss than other models. So we're gonna say for the price, they're really good. But unfortunately with Mackie, if you do spend twice as much, that little tends to fade away. So, but outside of that, if you're buying them for gaming purposes, if you're buying them for entertainment just to be able to play music on, maybe your set of speakers you have at work or in your den and you want to have a good set of speakers to play, that's really good. If you're a creator, I'd invest either more money in Mackie, step up the ladder a bit, or I would go look at the M Audios as a good alternative. Then, like I said, we still sell, still look at a lot of these and people still want to have these. People really like the look. If you're into green, and I'm not, you know, this front cover on their speakers, quite the signature look, I have to say. You know these are a set of Mackie speakers. And a lot of people buy it because they like the bass response out of it. They like the sharp, clear sound that they get from it. And they really like the green. Mackie really likes to trick it up. If you got these in Bluetooth, by the way, this button here, sorry, this logo here of the Running Man would actually uh, be the Bluetooth button. You press that button and it would light up, which is another cool thing. So we'll take a look, see at the back. There you go, do this here. On the back of the speaker, what do we have here? We've got ourselves quarter inch balance and unbalanced inputs, which is kind of standard what we want to see. We also get our RCAs and they put their 3.5 in the back. They also give you a flick switch in the back up and down for your left and right, which again, this is starting to look pretty standard on all the new models allowing you to make the choice of having the speaker be either your left or right. Now they use regular speaker wire included to connect your second speaker. And, and again, this is a model that's going to put all their tech into one speaker. So the amp, the preamp, everything you need in here. And this is how they actually save money on the product and pass that savings on to you. Because their second speaker is gonna be just blank in the back. So they go full panel on the back where M Audio actually duplicates the same actual metal plate panel in the back. And I think it's their way of looking at it and saying, well, we want to have the same residency. Uh, this does change the overall audio of this speaker versus the other one, but so small that it's measured on the computer, not by my ears, that's for sure. Like I'm not, I'm gonna tell you that they're different, but I'm gonna tell you I've never heard anything different come out of these two speakers. So. I've never heard anything different. So yes, on a computer, if I put a mic in front of this one, I put a mic in front of this one, the computer will tell you 
there's a subtle difference between these two speakers. But when you're playing them, you're not going to hear them. Now, again, these are the fours. They come in smaller and bigger size, depending on the placement and how far away. Again, if you have two or three monitors on your desk, I would go two monitors, the four. If I had three monitors spread across, or if I have one of these great super wide monitors, maybe I get into the five. If the speaker is now sitting, if to my right, I've got four feet, and to my left, I've got four feet, I'm getting close to the fives. But if I'm only three feet, if I can just almost touch them, I would get the fours. If I can like touch them right there, I would get the threes. So there you go. These are the Mac. These are the CR4X. And if you want Bluetooth, the CR4X-BT. And they come in a really nice box too, by the way. So we're going to put these right here. Oh, what do You know what we're gonna have right now, there it are, we're gonna have a little intermission. We're gonna take a we're gonna take a two minute. I'm gonna catch my breath. See you right back here in two minutes. So here we are. We are back. Thank you very much for hanging around. We're going to get through all the small stuff. Remember, if you have any questions on any of the stuff that we've already covered, by all means, drop it down below in the comment section if you got questions. Also, if you want to follow, by all means, hit that follow button. It basically lets you know when we're going to be back. So next on the list of great stuff is...
We are up to what, Dar? The Mackie 10. We're up to the Mackie 10. Okay. So I'm going to adjust this camera up a little bit, and then we're going to try and have Darlene tell me that she can see the Mackie 10. So can we see that mixer over there? Mm -hmm. All right. And are we straight? Let's take a closer look. There we go. Now, there we go. Awesome. Now, okay. So everything we've talked about before, I'm sorry, I got to tighten this up. It just doesn't want to stay on it here. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Okay. So here we are. This is the actual Mackie 10 channel. Everything about the V6 here as well. Plus we've got an extra two channels coming down the front. And we also now have a high, mid and low control. We have the same great gain controls all the way up to plus 60 on the unit. Very important. And now we have insert options across the actual four channels. So if you need to put any effects or anything like that, and by all means, you can do that. Now on the mixer itself, you're going to get a compressor on both channel one and channel two, which I really like. I use all the time. As you can see, this is here because we use it on a lot of videos. So if you're looking for a mixer that I use, this is one of them. I try a lot of different equipment out, but I really like the way this one works for me. Now, the first two channels also have high Z options on it. And then when you get to channel three and channel four, they double down as well. So three also has a left right option. Sorry. Three also has my correction. Insert and what are we looking at here? Channel three. Oh, sorry. My apologies. So where the first two have combo jacks on them because they want to give you that high Z button right below it. You get to channel three and four, you lose the high Z, but you get a separate quarter inch input. And then when you get over to channel four, you're going to now see that your standard gain controls on three and four are gone for the compressors. So compressor options are taken off on three and four. That's very important. Again, for me, I'm primarily two actual microphones and a lapel, which is why I have that set up all the way at the end here. When you come down the actual unit, the yellow knobs refer to the effects and the gray knobs refer to the pan and options on it. So you can go to your left and right on each individual channel. Now again, this is audio interface, 192 bit quality, sorry, 192 hertz with 24 bits when it comes to quality. So this is the same as buying a proper audio interface. The advantage is here again, two channels going to our computer. So we're going to have a dedicated channel one and channel two, which is going to be our left and right options. And then we have four channels coming back. And this is where people do get tricky with the playback. Just like on the actual six channel, we've got channel one and two on the blend option right here. So it has two headphones or monitors. So we can choose where that sound's going to actually go. But we also have channel three and channel four, which are located right on their own right here. So the last two channels, channel nine and 10, have a button for USB three and four. So if I choose, if I go into channel three and four, this might seem convenient because you have bass and treble control, but you have to be very careful with this because if you're actually doing any playback, sorry, if you're doing any recording here and you have this actual channel hot and you currently have your software turned up, you're gonna get feedback or you're gonna get a looping echo in your audio, right? Because you were using three and four. So you have to make sure these channels are turned down or make sure you use channel one and two if you plan on listening in and monitoring or using it as an actual mix option. Channel three and one and two for that mix option. Channel three and four if you want to record that audio as part of a backtrack as part of your actual new audio setup. But again, I really like this. There's tons of options on it. And people do sometimes, you know, there's always options that people say, I wish it had like the old one did. They've taken away the RCAs and they put a 3.5 on channel 9 and 10. And that's not a bad thing because the RCAs were unbalanced and you're going to get the same unbalanced option here. It just means the cable you're going to buy. You can certainly buy a uh, two, two basically quarter inch to a stereo 3.5 and it will give you the same output. So it'll be unbalanced at each end with a balanced connection here. Basically stereo here with two mono connections. Let me see. I might have a cable that may show you what that looks like. And by the way, that could also be RCAs, 3.5 to RCA. And of course, when I want to show the exact cable, I won't have, but this happens to be quarter inch. So instead of this end being quarter inch, you'd want this to be, whoops. Instead of this end being quarter inch, you want this end to be 
3.5 and if it's 3.5 it will fit right into channel 9 and 10 and notice that where this one is set up as a stereo these two are set up as mono so to the point that this one is red for right and black for left so that's the idea this could have been rca connections as long as this is 3.5 it will go in there and you'll be all set and these cables are normally not meant for long runs you're going to get this in a two meter six foot length and that's normally what you're looking for right there so Mm, 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 mm. And there you go. That is the Mackie. That's that's the Mackie Pro FX. No, sorry, the Mackie Pro FX V Pro FX 10 V3. Boy, that's a mouthful. So Pro FX V 10 V3. And again, as Mackie mixers go, as mixers overall go, any of the any of the V3s can really be. You know, a nice mixer if you need to put a lot of equipment into one board and you don't want to spend twice as much for a bigger audio interface. But you do like the idea of having a mixer, especially if you're going to go out and do some live shows. What are we up to now? In-ear monitors. Okay. So since we're talking about a larger mixer like Mackie, where you're going to take it out live. One of the other things you may want to have are in-ear monitors. And there's a very popular set. We've already done videos on this product and it's been very popular. But every once in a while, I do hear a complaint about somebody who says they have a bit of a hiss in the background. And I'm not going to lie. They, they don't have a bit of a hiss in the background. But I am going to run through a couple of the things that allow you to get rid of that hissing noise. One is when you buy these guys, you want to make sure you give them a good full charge. Charge them up for two hours at least when you buy them. Because when you buy them, it may show that they're full. But for some particular reason, after two hours, you play them and it definitely is full. Nice thing is they're color codes. So that's really good. The other important thing is you do want to try them on different channels. That's a big benefit for getting rid of any background noise like a hissing sound. Now, one other hissing sound that I did notice on the unit, and that is when I have it hooked up to this mixer. When the actual unit is plugged in, I'm just gonna get the appropriate part out of the box here. Oh, here's the adapter. So this particular unit, which is the receiver, sorry, which is the transmitter. If I plug this in, the transmitter is the part that's gonna pick up from the headphone in this case, because I put the headphone adapter on it. I plug this into the headphone of the mixer. For some particular reason, there's RF noise coming off the mixer and it's making its way into the adapter. And when that happens, you get this little whistly sound out of it, which is kind of annoying. So what I've done is I've used a short 3.5 to 3.5 adapter and extension. Uh, if I had a quarter inch extension, I would have used that, but I don't. I take the adapter off. I use my short extension, which gets it away from the mixer because that's where the problem is. I get it away from the mixer and that noise is gone. Just gone. No more background squeechy sound and you can tell it's from the mixer because as soon as you move it away it's gone you don't even have to play it you put this next to the mixer and it's making noise so we definitely know that the problem is proximity to some of the equipment so occasionally if you have that problem just get yourself an extension so you can move this away to a part of the electronics that is not going to cause any interference outside of that range is phenomenal uh, I've used these on many videos. You wouldn't see them because I'm wearing in-ear monitors and they're in behind my head, but you get everything with it. So as a rig goes, they do include an awful lot in the box. First of all, they give you different types of adapter sizes for your earbuds. So we'll pull those out for a second. If you're not in the mood to go out and spend a hundred bucks right away on in-ear monitors, cause they're, you know, they're pretty pricey. They start, you know, at a hundred bucks. Uh, you can buy yourself, sorry, you will get yourself a nice pair in the box with it. And they're reasonably priced if you were to buy them on their own. And they actually work out really well. Uh, I just personally didn't want the blue, so I did invest in a pair for myself. I'll show you those in a minute. But these guys do have all the ability to do the job. You do have to get them in there pretty deep. Do practice putting them in and taking them out. That's why they give you three different sizes for your ears. And they do take a bit of practice. So this way they sit right in deep in the canal to where it's supposed to. Uh, be careful with the volume. If, uh, if you haven't used them before, practice with the actual receiver and the head unit. 
Just put these in your ears a little bit. Don't put them in all the way. Practice turning it on and off. You'll know when, you know, you probably make a popping sound because you've turned on the mixer after you turn on the unit. Make sure you get it in a way that's where you, you know when it's going to pop and when it's not going to pop. It sounds annoying, but if you've ever had speaker monitors on and you've turned something on, like your speakers first, then your mixer, and you get that popping noise, well, you certainly don't want that coming through your ears. So practice a little bit, and then after you practice, by all means, crank up the volume, you'll be all set. They also include all kinds of cables and adapters in the box. There are adapters, so this way you can plug them into another speaker. So if, instead of actually having this plug into a set of monitors, if I need to plug this into my studio monitors, but I'm like far away and I don't want to run the cable, but I need to have, let's say, this speaker here. Let's say I had this speaker, and this speaker was in a separate room from the mixer, and I want it to be able to go from the headphone connection here, and I want to plug into the back of these speakers, I get a cable and I can plug that right into the monitor input. You got to remember, the signal coming out of this is stereo, so it's unbalanced two channels. I do not want to take this and plug it in to uh, a quarter inch, so I don't want to have this with the actual stereo headphone adapter, so I certainly don't want to do this which again is stereo headphone adapter. I don't want to plug this adapter into the back of a quarter inch input where it says balanced or unbalanced. That's going to basically reduce 50% of your overall volume. It's going to cancel out a lot of the audio. So if you are going to plug into a monitor input jack on the back of a powered speaker or a speaker monitor, make sure and use the quarter inch adapter that's unbalanced. It looks like a mono jack. When you plug that in the back, it will not lose any sound and it will not change the quality of sound you have in it. They also include a short extension with it, which we've talked about before, which is very nice. There's a short one included in the package if you need to make that special adaption to make it all work. And a very easy instruction manual. And again, with their model, it is stereo. There is a rubber grip to the back of it. There is on off switches and it's a very easy system to follow micro USB-C, sorry, USB-C cable connections. We always can use more USB-C cables included. That's what we get there. <coughs> so there you go. Does it work? It works very well. And like I said, I've used it in many videos. It does help me listen in to what's going on in the background or if I'm doing any voiceovers work where I've got to redo my audio, it really works out well for that. So, and again, you can use it live. It's got good range to it, you know, 50 to 65 feet, maybe even more. And we'd have to check the instruction to get that right down to the number, but it's got great range. So no worries there. The mixer's set up off to the side of the stage and you're using these guys. It's going to work out really well. And that's the Kimafun in your monitors. Do, 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 do. And next, 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 next. Oh, yes, we did all that, put all that stuff away. Now we're going to go look at the X5. So I put the other one away. I wanted to compare the two at the same time. So now we have, we're going to reset this camera here a bit here, Dar. And we're going to drop this, I guess, a little bit, right? There you go. Happy, happy, joy, joy. There we go. We've got ourselves the X5. Now, the X-Vibe is built out of more metal, aluminum, and plastic connections to it. It just feels beefier. It does cost more, by the way, than the Kimfun. The one drawback, though, is this is a mono rig. It's not stereo. So if you're looking for stereo, no, it's not. But for most cases, mono is going to do the job just fine. And I really like the overall. I like the clip assembly. It's a solid piece of hardware. It's not going to break because... There's nothing cheap about this, that's for sure. It also features six channels, just like x Vibe's other products. And it offers good volume control, long life on the battery, lithium on both. It uses a micro USB cable, which is a split cable to charge both units. And very important right here is that you can pair off as many of these guys. They've set up their equipment so you can buy receivers, the monitor portion separately from the transmitter. So you can buy it as kits or you can buy it in parts and build your own, which is really nice. Now, 
the Kimifun can do the same thing. You can buy parts separately. The difference is theirs is going to be stereo and these are going to be mono. Though if you have a larger set of X5 products, it's a good system to grow on. So if you are looking for something a little bit more rugged, really well done. Uh, you do need to buy your in-ears separately with their products. Their products are, technically speaking, a more expensive. Uh, so to make that possible, I use the Shure SE 215s. Now, if I was if I was a musician, maybe I'd have like the three. I'd have a, a higher end pair. But I do I do this, so I just need good quality in ear monitors, which are going to work well with the X Vibe, and that's exactly what I get when I buy this. I really like the fit of the actual Shure model. They just go in my ears really well. I can get them right in there. You don't see them at all. They're invisible once they're actually in. And they're easy identified. You know, you get the, the red and you get a blue, so your left and right is easily identified. And again, you got to practice with these ears. So when you're using the in-ear monitors, you like I said, you got to get in front of a mirror if you haven't used these before. You got to put them on. You got to make sure they're on properly. And if you're not hearing any full depth and bass response, if you're not hearing the low end or you're not hearing big volume, they're not seated right. Uh, if you have a friend that has a pair or somebody else in the family who has a pair of in-ear monitors, certainly ask them for help using them the first time. Remember, be careful about the volume when using them. If you haven't used them before, keep the volume down, put them in, make sure you play and practice with them a lot. This way you feel comfortable with using them and knowing when to turn it up and when to turn on your X5. But there you go. These The Shure SC215s, if you're looking for in-ear to make any type of podcast or live show better, these are definitely a great way to go. They're going to work well every time you use them and they're very reliable, that is for sure, for sure. So there we go. That's our in-ear products for today. That's gonna cover all of that. Now we're on to a couple of fun little items. Microphones. So we're gonna compare I'm going to start with the PGA 58 and then we're going to talk about the SM58. If you're doing live shows, if you're doing stuff for fun and for free, if you're not going on tour, uh, let's say, right, if you're using it for a house of worship, this is a great way to go. If you're going to respect the product you have, not drop it every day when you use it, the PGA 58 is absolutely amazing. To compare this to the SM58 for sound quality, you really, let's be honest. Computer is going to tell you what the differences are. Not me physically talking into the microphones and giving you my personal opinion. I like them both very much because what I do is use them for these spoken words. Just use them for talk. I'm not singing in these microphones. But for people who do sing, I know so many people who can't tell you the difference. They enjoy both of them very, very much. If you're doing them for live... That's great. If you're using them for studio, then you're probably going to upgrade yourself from a PGA 58 and go to an SM58 for studio use. But if they're for your own use, if they're for fun and for free work, so this way maybe you're a DJ and you need microphones to hand out and around, PGA 58s are a great way to go. If you're using them just for home use, for parties, for your own studio, maybe you do a lot of karaoke and you want to have good quality microphones for everybody to use, including yourself, PGA 58 beautiful microphone that's a great way to go and it comes with and without cables so check what you want to plug it into if you're plugging this microphone into a speaker directly then you're going to want to get the quarter inch if that's what the speaker calls for if you're going to get this microphone for a mixing board or an audio interface you definitely want to make sure you get a cable that's xlr to xlr and there you go the pga 58 from sure now let's talk up the actual SM58 because of course it's the SM58. All I have to do for people to like it is hold it in my hand and go, ooh, look, this is a sure SM58 because that's the type of microphone we're talking about. If you can afford an SM58, you go ahead and buy yourself an SM58. Absolutely. Again, if for fun and for free work, PGA, but if you're going to buy something for a studio and you're at that point in your career where you think you want to have as good as you possibly can for a reasonable price, you want to have something that's very, very durable. Uh, again, if you're buying this for any house of worship and you want to have high performance and people are very bad with maintaining their equipment, then buy the SM58. It's a very, very durable product. 
It's got a signature sound to it, which is very important. It is represented in some of their other models and brands. But again, the SM has that unique 58 sound to it. It's a signature to its own. Again, for most people, it sounds smooth with a lot of definition. You get almost the same reproduction in the PGA. There is a little bit more of a bump at the 200 hertz mark when it comes to their actual unit. It's built into the system. But again, you can feel the difference. When you buy an off-brand and you hold a PGA 58, don't ask me why, it weighs a lot. There is a small little circuit board and some electronics going on inside there. And their capsules are suspended. They're in a, a rubber suspended space. So this way it's not hard plastic. It minimizes the amount of transfer between the handle versus the capsule and the top. So there you go. SM58, you can never really go wrong. You'll enjoy it. And the same rules apply. If you're plugging this into a mixing board, definitely make sure you get one with an XLR cable. Remember, sometimes you can buy this without XLR cable. So if you have lots of them, you can just buy the microphone. Or if you plan on using a wireless adapter, which we're going to talk about, right now so in these lovely pouches right here so in these lovely pouches right here are some x5 wireless 2.4 gigahertz systems now we're going to open them up and see which one's which but one has a c so it's called the U3C and the other one's just called the U3. They're both interchangeable, by the way, when it comes to components. If I put one on channel three and I grab, this happens to be the U3, because I can tell they're black. Put that down here. And the other ones are the gray. In this case, my models are slightly gray. And they are the C. The C stands for condenser microphone. In other words, they have a 48 volt option on them. So I can run them on anything that requires power. There are lots of microphones, not just condenser microphones, that call for 48 volt. Either for protection purposes, like they do in ribbon microphones, or because they want to have a built-in preamp in them. And that preamp is basically to make the microphone more sensitive, to increase the dynamics of the microphone. So in this case, if I take one of these guys, I can take this. It's got a rubber ring on the back of it. But that, we're going to come over to the small camera here so I can show how that clicks in. So again, standard XLR. I can take this PGA, turn it into a wireless PGA. Now, it is 2.4. I'm going to talk a bit about that in a minute. Now, also, the SM58 fits in here as well. I can certainly take that, plug that right into here. And you notice i got to put a little force. There's a rubber ring there. It's a secure connection. This microphone is not going to go anywhere. Unless I push that button, we're not worried about it. And again, six channels on both them, interchangeable on the receivers. Now remember, you can only have one microphone on the one because it has to make a connection to the actual product. Now, that being said, we'll come back up to the top one. So that being said, quality and range. The higher you move up in the frequency scale, you're going to reduce the range you have. But you're also going to increase the speed and, and, and performance of the actual unit. So if you're using this in a bar, good line of sight, front to back, you're going to do just fine. I know a lot of people are concerned. There's no delay on it. It's like 50 milliseconds. It's nothing. Sorry, it's 5 milliseconds. It's like somebody standing 5 feet away from you. But in real life, they're standing 50 feet away from you. That's the kind of delay you get off of a unit like this. It's, you can't pair off to it like Bluetooth. Basically, it runs off a single channel straight operation. So we're not pinging the units back and forth like they do on Bluetooth. A lot of complicated stuff going on in Bluetooth. That's not happening here. But with these six channels, it allows me to run as many actual receivers as I want. Also very important. And again, it allows you to have a large span. Six different channel setups with six different receivers. That makes things really good to operate when it comes to the actual overall setup. So the X5, there's other brands out there now, but the X5 was definitely one of the first ones and they're still really, really popular because they have a lot of reliability to them. People want to make sure this lasts and this works and these guys do the job. I do like the fact that the antenna, the butt end of the antenna sticking out. So as long as you're holding the microphone and not the wireless transmitter, you'll do just fine. So a lot of people say they have range issues because they've covered the whole thing. And it's just like anything that's got Bluetooth in, if you put your hand in the wrong spot, that would be bad. So it has more to do with the frequency than anything else. So again, if you're holding the microphone like this, you will get yourself 75 feet from the actual 
mixing board. So if you've plugged this in your mixing board, 75 feet line of sight. Uh, I've tested this around the corner from a mixing board, down a hallway, just stepped outside some doors. I was at almost 75 feet. And then, then in the parking lot, it would cut out. That's a long trip to go before your microphone's cut out. So if you're inside an auditorium or a gymnasium, or if you're in a hall or a church, these tend to work out really well as long as you've got line of sight to the other end of the room. And that is your X-Vibe. So there we go. We've covered all the microphones. We've done all this. We've got one last exciting little product. Everybody likes to talk about this, so we're going to talk about this right now. And this is a product from Alto. And again, this has to do with live settings. And it is the totals, which they have two new ones out there. Uh, they've been out for a little while now. Uh, but two of them, which is, well, better than one of them. And they've got some great tech on them. So get these microphones back over here. So here we are. We've got one's called the Alto Total, which is also known as the Total 2.0. I am doing this right. Yes, this one right here. Total 2.0. And it's very important because it has changed shape compared to the original Total. Now, a couple of things that are very important to note, it is Bluetooth and it does have TWS, True Wireless Stereo Synchronization. So you can have two of these, one on one speaker and you know 50 feet in the other direction on another speaker and use only one tablet one phone one laptop to connect to both speakers that's very very important and this product's been very very popular because of those features rechargeable lithium battery built right inside the unit so let's get a close-up look at this and then we're going to compare it to the we're going to compare it to the ultra there we go so here we are so this one here, the 2.0, or what they call the total, being the new total, doesn't have a secondary XLR option on it. It has just the one side. Plug this into the back of the speaker, into our mixing board, wherever we have an XLR connection that's an input. And then we can easily pair off to it by pressing the top button. And the second button is called for stereo link. That's how we would connect two of them together. Pair off first to, let's say, my phone. And then after pairing off to my phone, I can then turn the second one on, press the stereo link, Come back to the first one, press the same button, and voila, everything's done. Good to go. Now, let's say you want to put this onto a mixer. You get this guy right here. Now, this could also be for a mixer or if you have a dedicated set of speakers that you want to run a second XLR cable to. This one is very impressive. This, let's say I need to plug one speaker in to the bottom. Sorry, one speaker into the top. But then I need to plug something else in separately, another speaker with a 50 foot XLR cable. I can do that with the back here. I only need one adapter, so you invest a little bit more in buying the ultimate, run the cable that you may already have, and you're all set. Now you can also, whoops, thank you, Dar. You can also use this, my apologies, you can also use this on, the, on a mixer. <coughs> Excuse me. You can also use this on a mixer because I can plug this in for one channel. And remember, this will create a left and right output option automatically to it. So I can then plug this in to a second channel on the mixer. So plug this into channel one, short jumper cable, plug this into channel number two. If I want to, I can also just leave this off the actual mixer altogether and use two XLR cables, short XLR cables to make that connection to the XLR board. Because a lot of people are a little concerned about the overall height because here, let me grab a mixer. So here's the mixing board. Here's one of them. We're going to plug that in on top. Here's the second one. If we were to plug two of them side by side, that is a pretty, I mean, that is a pretty substantial height. I mean, that's full length of my hand. So if I use just one of them, I can easily just have two little short one foot XLR cables going in from here to here. And I can leave that behind and not have it in the way at all. That's again, your choice. Again, you can also use a short XLR cable off the back of the speaker if you don't want this sticking out of the whole speaker. But to take any speaker that doesn't have Bluetooth in it, either one of these are going to do a great job. If you only need to do one speaker, there you go. Buy yourself into the Alto Total Bluetooth Total. If you want to plug in two speakers but use only one device, here you go. If you want to be completely wireless, 
and have two speakers 50 feet apart from you and 50 feet apart from each other, total distance spread of 100 feet, you can just buy two of either one. You can buy two of these guys, which is just a regular total, or two of the ultimate totals. Your choice. But this is a savior for lots of people that have speakers, big powerful speakers, but no Bluetooth capability to them, or did have Bluetooth and it stopped working and they just want better quality Bluetooth. There you go. And that is going to be everything. All right, do we have any questions on any of these uh, at this point? No, we're good and clear on that. Well, there we are. So that is today's show. It's all about creators. And again, we're going to have more shows. So by all means, follow at any point. If you're coming back and you've watched this because it's in replay now, which it will be, uh, thank you very much for taking the time. I'd like to thank everybody who's watched the show up to this point. Thank you again for watching. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now. See you next time.